This video is going to cover CSS relative and absolute positioning. Before we get started with actually writing some code, you need to understand the differences between relative and absolute positioning, how they work together in order to affect where your content is on a web page. Relative positioning moves an element to a new location based upon where the element would be in the normal top to bottom flow of your web document. In creating absolute positioning, Remember to always work with a parent element that has a CSS rule set to relative. It's a good practice to follow and you'll find your positions will work a lot better. To demonstrate the capabilities of relative and absolute positioning, we're going to be creating a HTML web form that will eventually have all of our prompts lined up nicely and all of our input fields lined up nicely. I've created a basic web document that has a form in it with four form fields, a submit button, and we've already done a little bit of styling to our body, a container, and an image. So I'd like to have you take a look at what it looks like before we start doing our relative and absolute positioning. When the raw HTML code is rendered without doing any styling, you can see that our first name, last name, email and comments labels are bunched right up against our text boxes. Notice also that comments is at the lower end and our submit button is in the left hand position as well. Back to the code. Okay, we're going to be working with certain elements within our page and I just want to review those elements really quickly. First thing that we're going to be working with is our field set. We have two of those one with the class of info and one with the class of submit. I'm going to be doing a little bit different things with each of them so it's a good way of breaking them. Then we have our paragraph which is the parent to both our label and our inputs. So if you've been listening you'll understand that I'm making a single parent so that I can make that relative and work with these two either relative or absolute. So let's start with our field sets and we're doing two similar things with our properties on this field sets and then one different on each one so I'm going to do the two same that are the same first I'm going to get a width of 800 pixels on both and I'm going to give it a margin of 0 and auto by now you should know that 0 and auto means that we're going to try to center the field sets within our container element so let's go down here to our field set submit paste those in and here I'm going to give it a height of 250 pixels and for our submit area field set we're going to do a border of none. So I'm going to launch this in Firefox so you can take a look and see what it looks like and as you can see we've got an even margin here on both sides now made it relative so now we can start working with our labels and our inputs. Let's do our labels, or let's do our paragraphs first since they're the parent of those two and I'm going to say that we're going to clear both. That means that they're going to absolutely wind up moving down each line. We're going to give it a padding of 5 pixels. We're going to make the position relative. Now that we have that position relative we know that we can work with absolute for any of its children. 25 pixels for its left position. Whoops, what did I just do? It took it out. Left 25 pixels. Save this. I'm going to go back and refresh here. You'll see everything adjust downward to the right a little bit. There we go. Don't worry, we're going to make some changes in here and it'll look nice and clean. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish with our label of our info field set. And our label, we're going to get a width of 250 pixels. We're going to float each one to the left. We're going to make the position relative. Now, even though the parent's relative, I'm going to tell this to stay within its normal flow and I'm going to give it a padding right of 25 pixels. 
The last thing we're going to do is we're going to work with our input and our text areas within our info. The last thing we're going to do before we look at the change again. And I'm going to do a position, absolute. And I'm going to say give it a left break of 250 pixels from its parent, which is the paragraph. So let's go ahead and reload. And you see now everything's lined up very nicely on the left, on the right, they're lined up here. So the last thing we need to move around is our input button. We'll give it a little style color as well, just to make it look a little better. So we're going to do a position. You want to guess? Absolute or relative? Well, we don't want to take it out of its normal flow, so let's, let's do a relative. We're going to do a left of 250 pixels. That's again from our paragraph down there. I'm going to give it a background color of the dark blue that we're using for the outside of our container, 225B94. And I'm going to do obviously a text of white if my background is blue. So let's take a look and reload this. Our last thing is our button down centered or lined up with these and that's our final product so thank you very much for watching hope you enjoyed it hope this showed you how to use absolute and relative together and keep watching